Uh, hey, Chris. That is the greatest shirt I've seen today. Like, well done. Skeeter was black, yeah, right? I do he was black. Like, let's see, he, he was he was black. It's like uh, you watch Arthur. Like, Buster was yeah, but well, yeah, Brain was black. Yeah, Brain was definitely black. Uh, so tough act to follow with Sean up here, but uh, <laughs> oh, did I just miss Sean? How great was that? Uh, great would be one way. Who got insulted? Uh, I think everyone, yeah. but yeah. Uh, it, was your, it was your hair. Uh, you, well, your hair. You're being Asian. Was it Asian or hair? Really? Wow. Good for him. He's growing. He's he's growing. Yeah. That's what'd what'd you get? Uh, hair. I I got the hair. Who else? No. Even those. Bro, why? Uh, that's fine. It's whatever. It's fine. How, it, it scares me, but whatever. How much time have you spent with Sean leading up to this fight? Because you did some training in Colorado too, right? Yeah, I just popped out there. Uh, it was early in camp. Uh, I'm one of those guys to where I'm honestly like looking back at it. Everybody's kind of pointed out I do much better when I'm not in camp for 12 weeks. Like I kind of like I burn myself out and I freak out. So uh, the first couple of weeks we kind of burned. We we're still training hard, but I went around. Uh, I went out to Factory X for a little bit. Got to work with uh, Coach Mark Montoya, which is really fun. Um, I always, I always say there's no thing as a perfect gym. Every gym got things they're great at. And like Coach Mark, I mean, I, I get to train with Eric, one of, the, one of the best coaches in the game, and Nate. But Coach Mark Montoya has a different like philosophy and way of fighting. So it's kind of cool to go out there and work with him. Uh, he helped out a lot. Got to work with uh, Josh Fram, who's fun. Uh, I got beat up by uh, what's his name, Justin Jacoby, who's like just better than me. I was like, yeah. Justin Jacoby's one of those guys you spar. I'm like, you're just better than me. Like, all right, fine. Like, screw it. So it was a good experience, though. I got some uh, different mentality about things. But as far as the Sean thing, um, I see Sean every day of the week, like Monday, except for Sundays, thank God now. It used to be seven days a week, but now I see him uh, Monday through Saturday. So I don't know. He's always uh, – we got two different fights, two different camps, but he's always there. He's always helpful. So it's been a lot more time with Sean. It's probably healthy for a normal person. Yeah, even uh, Jesus needed one day off, right? Fuck, right. God, uh, Jesus. He, 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 bought, he bought his house. So, like, now, like, I don't come home and have him yelling at me. Like, you don't know how many times we like, live, like, literally across, like, from here to the wall from each other. So I come home, but first thing I hear is, hey, Kurt, Kurt. I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, bro, go home. I'll be in my house. He's just there. Like, I'll be in my bathroom. He's open the door. Like, what's your problem, Miss Kurt? I was like, oh, no, I'm taking a shit, bro. Like, what, what's my problem, though? So it's kind of nice not having the random Sean uh, appearances. Is uh, the Colorado stuff all kind of part of this mental refresh you're trying to do, getting off social media, just maybe trying a little bit of a break here? Is this all kind of part of the plan? Most definitely. Like, I, I think my biggest thing is, like, so I'm someone who's very hard on himself. Like, I've always been hard on myself. I've always wanted to be better than the guy next to me. And when I'm not, it, like, eats me up inside. So I think the big issue for me was, like, the, the, the Nasser Dean fight. The last fight was such a dumb fight for me to, like, in hindsight, all of my coaches and my managers were like, you should probably take some time like, after the Kelvin fight. It was a really hard camp. Like, I was mentally – and physically, I was I was kind of beat up from the camp. But more so than anything, I was mentally, I was just fucking tired, bro. Like, I was really tired. I was frustrated. I beat myself up that camp and then not have it go down that way in a fight that I thought, like, came down to, like, one moment in the second round. It freaking, like, crushed me, man. So, like, to immediately go into another fight, everybody around me was like, Chris, we should probably wait a little bit. But – uh. I've known my entire, I've been known my entire life for making bad choices and not listening. So for me, instead of like, you know, taking time to refresh and come to grips with stuff, I'm like, I'll just jump back in and do shit. And went back to another hard physical camp when I was already like mentally not in the greatest space. And like that entire guy was a miserable camp, bro. That was such a miserable camp. Cause I'm so like mad about Nasser, no, about the uh, gasoline thing. I'm trying to like figure out what went wrong. And it's just, it was just dumb. And like, I should have listened. So, uh, because we got this one, we're cool with it, fine. Uh, my coaches and my manager all know that I need, you know, I'm really good in like five no, five weeks. I'm always in shape. Five weeks is perfect. So they're like, hey, man, let's keep training, but let's go do some shit. Get away from Vegas. Get away from all the same people. See different things. Like, you know, like train hard all you want, but do it somewhere else. Like see things. Have fun. So that was a big thing is, you know, Colorado was a good experience, but it was fun for me. And like I haven't really been having fun in camp in like a few years now. Honestly, since I got to the UFC, which is kind of like ironic, but you know, trying to try to make it more fun for myself and just you know enjoy. Remember, I I enjoy this. Like I love this. Hey, Chris, right here. Uh, so you mentioned. Hey, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Good to talk to you. Um, 
So uh, you mentioned going to Factory X, and obviously um, I don't think he was there for this camp. But Julian Marquez, I know, fought Marc Andre last year. Um, I, was it you know good for the coaching staff to sort of hone in on Marc Andre just because Julian was preparing him uh, for him last year, anyways? Uh, ironically, we didn't hone in on Marc Andre at all. It was more so about not so much who I'm fighting because who, who you fight changes. Who you fight? I mean, he could like. I, I like Marc Andre, like, uh, you know, cross your fingers. He could, like, trip down the stairs, break his ankle today. I could be fighting somebody else come Saturday. So it's not really so much as about who you're fighting. That, that's going to change. There's always different uh, ten- intangibles in that. It's more so about what am I consistently doing or not doing that's creating issue. So that, that, that was something kind of nice, too. Like, I'm not – I'm trying to focus less on the guy I'm fighting and more about, okay, like, how can I make myself a more consistent package? Because, I honestly, I have to remember that I'm damn good at what I do. I just – they're – things I do consistently well, and there are things I do consistently bad. So it's kind of now we're just, hey, let's keep doing the things we do great. Let's keep doing it. But let's start uh, cutting back on a few of those things we do consistently bad that are getting me in trouble at this level. How different are things going into this fight than, say, your last one, just because of the switch up in camp, like you said, not you know on social media, not doing much media? Um, how are things different for you? Oh, uh, God, personalized, it's great. Like, being on social media was such a godsend. Like, oh, man, like, I don't really want to go back. Like, I was back on for, like, four days because I needed a – so, hey, fun story. Uh, if you guys ever don't have a phone number you don't have social media, you are fucked. Like, it is. No one has phone numbers. Like, none of my teammates have each other. This is miserable. So I had to get back on to uh, get a phone number from a teammate. Now I'm back off again. But, like, even those three days on, man, you realize, like – you spend time doom scrolling. You're kind of like, oh, nothing's going on. Pop your phone open. You're scrolling. And what do you see? You see people like a lot of fake shit. You see people like all these fucking fitness influencers doing their BS. All the other influencers doing their BS. You see uh, people complaining about shit. People dying. And what's it's such, it's so toxic for your mind. Like, uh, you know, me, even me and my lady, we both uh, got off social media. And she's like, yeah, she got back on to post some stuff and she's like oh this is miserable three day three days in and she's like i'm depressed so just being unplugged from it and then as far as the sport uh being unplugged from us as far as the sport goes too like i have really great fans but i think that just i get overwhelmed with the interactions at times and i'm actually a combative person i'm a talkative person so i get drawn into that like that uh downward spiral too quickly it's just it's just who i am and everybody's different some guys you know it rolls off their backs for me for the most part i'm fine but like you know if i'm feeling a certain way that day it's gonna strike a nerve i'm gonna be on a war path it's just better to be unplugged from it man like uh like i said before it's a lot of peace of mind for me um we're still battling that part in camp to where i'm constantly judging myself and i'm never happy with anything i do it's great like we film all my sparring and it's freaking wonderful because every day i feel like i lose sparring Every single day, like this entire camp, I'm like, I lost my rounds. And my coaches are like, I don't even know why we talk to you. Just go watch the video. I'll go watch the video. I won my rounds. But like, it's never enough for me. And that's just a personal thing. I got to figure that shit out. I don't know what to do. Uh, I kind of I kind of uh, envy Sean in that point, man. Like, I've never seen a dude who's got the ability to be heated and then just let it roll off his back. And be like, okay, well, moving on. And like, I, I, I got to... Uh, that's something I got to take from him, actually. So we're working on that. But this camp's just been great, man. Like, I've kind of unplugged. We still have those uh, those mental battles, but I'm kind of just unplugged from it all and just focused on uh, me and Mark andre everything else. You know, it's noise. I'll deal with it later. Speaking of Strickland, are you, do you like being on the same card as him, or would you prefer to, you know, not be on the on the card just because your coaches will be tied up and all that, right? Uh, I think we're, uh, we're far enough apart. It's not going to be too bad. Um, it's kind of weird. Like, it's, it's cool. I don't think we've ever fought in the same car before. It kind of sucks, though, because I prefer to have him in his corner. I prefer to be like, more supportive than I am now. But uh, I'm a big boy. He's a big boy. We'll be fine. But uh, honestly, I, I kind of like it. Like, I don't, I'm probably only up here right now because Strickland's headlining this. And I was like, okay, well, he's first. So, like, hey, you know what? I love being up here, but uh, I'll, I'll definitely like use a uh, like ride in the wake of uh, the Strickland show. And just, uh, it's fun for me to see you guys uh, have to deal with it. And, uh, it's really fun being there on fight week and being so close to watch everyone else have to suffer. And you're like, how do you do this? I'm like, yeah, I'm a fucking saint. Like you guys, yeah, I'm a saint. You guys owe me. And just last one for me, who will be in your corner for this fight if, if, if Sean isn't? Uh, one of my teammates, Devin, is uh, here. He's going to be here with me along with uh, Nate and everybody else. Uh, Devin's about as awkward and pace heavy guys you can get who's not mark andre just an awkward guy he's gonna run at you punching touch high push from the cage try to shoot takedown so devin's just an awkward 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 freaking round so uh, he's gonna be here just helping me this week whatnot but 
honestly, we've got like half of Extreme Couture's big guy practice here. So fun times. Chris, right here. Um, right you here. mentioned uh, – sorry. Who's men- talking? Oh, right okay, I was like, what's happening? All right. you, you mentioned how toxic things are uh, online. I think in Vancouver you met one of your trolls. Was it Vancouver? Yeah, it was Vancouver, yeah. Have you met anyone here? Uh, no, actually, here's been cool, but I haven't left my room really. But yeah, here's been fine. But yeah, I did meet a troll in Vancouver, which only goes to serve, you know, it only like reinforces my point. I mean, I'll, I'll say this, people are like, oh, if you can't handle criticism, not everybody who says shit's a troll. I'm like, no, bro. Like once again, I've never met anybody in person who can keep the same energy as they have online. It's just makes me realize, like I said before, man, like social media is just a refuge of cowards. And I, I, just, I just don't have the patience for it anymore. I'm old. I've got kids. Like I wake up, my knees hurt now. I just don't have the patience for it, man. I just really don't. I feel that. Um, you know, Mark Andre has said that you are his ticket to the top 15. Does that add any motivation uh, for you coming Saturday? Uh, I mean, not really. Honestly, I was Brandon Allen's ticket. I was Phil Hall's ticket and a lot of other people's tickets. And I sent them right back. Oh, shit, Phil, Brandon Allen got there. So good job, him. He's killing shit. But uh, everyone says that. And people are like, oh, you're a gatekeeper. I'm like, okay, but you still can't come in. Like, you can come and gatekeep all you want. You can't come in. So, like, yeah, so... You can believe that, and that's fine. Like, Mark Andre's tough. I like Mark Andre. But everything you do, you're good at, I'm better at. I think I'm a better striker than you. I think I'm a better grappler than you. Uh, I think, honestly, my cardio matches yours, if not better. So, like, I don't, not, I'm not really sure what your plan is. You're either going to have to push me against the cage and try to stall for all life, which I'm better in the clinch than you, and I'll cut you down. Or are you going to try to play outside and, uh, you know, try to pull my least favorite game plan? And that's fine. We spent a lot of time working on that anyway. So, uh, I mean, I can be a ticket all you want. A lot of fucking missed flights happen every day, man. So it's whatever. Just a quick one. You said you haven't left your room. Is that just the weather? It is cold here. It is a frozen hellscape. And, like, I, I love Canada. I love Canada. You guys really do. I love Toronto. You guys are awesome. But it is a frozen, cold, like just, I don't, well, I don't know why you live here. It's just like the opposite end of the spectrum from uh, Phoenix right now. And Phoenix is too hot for people to live. Like It's too cold to be here. I got beautiful city, but I hate, I hate the weather here. And this is fucking miserable. This has been a warm winter. I'm from Ohio, which makes me ashamed. Everybody from Ohio is right now. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I've been out of Ohio for like seven or eight years now, and I've lost my cold weather immunity. Like, the combination of just like, you know, honestly, I'm not going to lie. I'm being a bitch about it. And second, like, uh, I'm really skinny right now. I was in really good camp, a lot of cardio. My body fat's really low. So, like, every wind, every breeze is just cutting through me. Like, I am, like, I'm, I'm old, guys. I'm fucking, it's like last year's the first year. Like, I wake up, my knees hurt. So, now I wake up today and I'm like, why are we here? I'm looking around, I was looking at my window. I was like, why did we, like, I, I love you guys. But like, can we come here when it's warm? Like, why do we do this? This is so weird. I hate this. There are warm places. Chris, the front right here. Um, have, will you talk to the referee about headbutts and stuff when he's coming in to give you your, you know, like, go over the rules and stuff? I mean, no, because apparently, like, I've uh, – who was it? Was it the last one? Not Master Dean. That's – the rules between a clash of heads and a headbutt are stupid. Like, so they called uh, – Herzog. I think it was Herzog, wasn't it? Called uh, the Gaslam a clash of heads. But I was like – I was moving. I was above him. He came up. I didn't come down. I was up and going backwards. He, I was, he was, it was weird. And then the gas, uh, the Imavov fight, they're like, oh, it was a clash of heads. I was like, I was moving backwards in UK. Like, I don't, so you know what? It doesn't matter because, like, I mean, I, it, no matter what happened, it's going to be a clash of heads. So, unless he's like diving forward. So, just not going to, I can't worry about it. Like, I can't, it's, uh, it's in the past. It happens. It's not the first time or the second time or third time I've been headbutted. Uh, being a southpaw, it's one of those things that like uh, everyone's like, oh, you're a southpaw, you're lucky. Like, well, the, uh, the opposite side of that is like you're gonna get run into when you're a five ten southpaw. So it is what it is, man. Like, fuck it, I can't worry about it. I'm just sitting here, like I'm expecting to get stitches. Like, it's fine. Well, Mark Andre said he promises to keep it clean, no headbutts. Dude, Mark Andre is a good dude. I like him, and like I don't think he'd do it intentionally. But also, we just happen to fly into. Like, apparently, I just have like a. I got a big ass head, so apparently, it has a orbit. I has like gravity and like shit's just pulled into it. So I don't I don't know, man. I know he's a good dude, Mark. I like Mark Andre, but I'm just, I'm expecting to get stitches from a headbutt today. So or Saturday, I just accept it. Like all right, you know, such is life. It's fine. Hi, right, Chris. One over here. 
Hey, Chris, over here on this side, uh, to your right. No, I was. <laughs> I thought it was him talking. No, it's pretty funny here. Um, <laughs> oh, oof. So the first time I ever interviewed you was way back in June 2018. If you can remember, you had just got that huge. Network, I don't remember yesterday. Huge now like contender series. You didn't get signed, and you told me that day you were done with MMA. You fought 17 times since then. Not that it's going to happen anytime soon. What what does the perfect retirement look like for you when when that day finally comes? What you just asked is the scariest question you can ask a professional fighter, especially a professional fighter that's in his mid thirties, like or technically like late mid to late thirties now. Uh, I don't know, man. I I don't know what that day looks like. I have been doing this professionally for like thirteen years now, fourteen years. Um, I kind of put all my eggs in one basket, man. I closed off a lot of other avenues when I was younger to pursue this. Like this is what I've all. I'm sorry, my phone is going off. This is annoying. Uh, this is what I chose to do, man. Like, ever since I was a you know 12 year old kid, this is all I've ever wanted to do was fight people. Uh, I thought it'd be more like Street Fighter and Tekken and like like cool shit and lasers and whatnot, but it's not a thing. But all I've ever wanted to do was fight. And at the contenders, I was so heartbroken because like not only just want to fight, but like I think the first UFC I ever watched was my father. My dad had a VHS of. Tito and was it Tito and Vitor? I think it was Tito and Vitor. It was the UFC in the Bayou, whatever the hell that one was. Maybe it was Vitor and uh, Vondelay, I don't know. But ever since then, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in the UFC. Like, I want to be in the UFC. I want to be in the UFC. And I was what? Content? I was like 31, 32 in contenders, whatever. And I was already getting up there. I already had like been passed over a bunch for the opportunity to fight in the UFC. You know, I felt I was ready. And getting that door closed in my face broke me, man. I was like, I've given my entire life for this. All I wanted to do was be in the big show. And not just be there. I wanted to see how far I can go. So like, having that door closed in your face like hurts, man. Like I, I, when your entire identity is Chris the Fighter, like what do you do when you're denied, you know, your chance? to be you know, on the biggest platform on the world, on the big stage. So that hurt a lot, man. But uh, hey, we, we, uh, we kept at it. We kept fighting because I love fighting. I don't know what else I'm gonna do. Like I really didn't level up any other skills besides unarmed combat. Like I can't go be a botanist or whatever. Like nah, man, all my points went to unarmed combat. So it's cool to be here. It's cool that worked. But as far as like, where's the end? Like, I don't know, man. That's the scary part. Like, when does Jim Miller think it's over? Like, how old is he? Like, 41? Yeah, freaking, uh, even in this division alone, um, what is his name? Large Other, other large black men. Like, top five? Cannoneer. Cannoneer, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good work. Cannoneer is like, what, four, 39, 40? Uh, yeah, 40, freaking, uh, even Prayer is like 39, up there, 36, yeah, good lord, man. So, you know, there's people older than me, but, you know, I, I like to look at them like wins enough is enough, man. I think everybody wants to be on top. Everybody, even more so than that, everybody wants to see how far they can go. So it's kind of hard to know, like, when's it over, like, when my body can't do it anymore. I, I have one more much less scary question. Ooh, all right. Yeah, that was I, that was I, dark. I, I, just about the main event, I assume you're picking Sean to win. I would hope so anyway. Uh, what's How do you break that down? How does he get it done? Oh man, I this is gonna be a circus. Like I want to use this. People use the term war. I prefer circus. Like there are certain fighters that have wars, and there are certain fighters that like create circuses. Like uh, Julian Arosa is another fighter. Julian doesn't have wars. I call those circuses because you're just like, what the hell's happening? Like things start going. Like, he starts doing weird stuff. Like they're like he's he's a circus guy, and I think Jerikus is a circus guy, man. Like I've never. I would never like hold Drikus up as like the pinnacle of like kickboxing technique, like as a technical kickboxer. But it's just weird. He's running at you. Like, it's almost like angry flailing. And like it's like feral almost, but like it creates a circus. So that's the big unknown for me. Uh people are like, oh, his cardio's better now. Like you're not gonna tire Sean out. Like we'll have three people attack Sean. He's still not he'll he'll die before he lets somebody like outwork him. So he's not going to outwork Sean. I don't see that anywhere. He's not going to hold Sean down. I've seen Sean like essentially squat on Goliath to get up. Like it's not worried about Drikus holding him down. Um, I'm just curious about how messy this gets. Like Drikus is a messy guy. Sean tends to be messy in pockets, but he likes to, uh, he tends to be very clean. 
So it's it's completely different clash of style and mentality. I, I just don't know how it goes. If anything, I think Drake is most dangerous his first round and a half, maybe two rounds. Even with the uh, – what's the last fight he had to look really good? Uh, Whitaker. He got – he looked better in the Whitaker fight, but like as a fighter, I'll say he slowed down the second round. Like I watched it slow down, but Whitaker slowed down more, never really got started. So his cardio did look better, but like I watched him slow down there in a fight that like he controlled the pace. Even the pace he controlled, he kind of like couldn't maintain it the way he wanted. And, you know, I watched, I cornered Sean when he fight a boost off of like 11 days notice and like keep pushing the pace, pushing the pace until we had to say, hey, man, I went in the second, third round. I told him, like, slow down. Like, I need you to slow down. Like, you won't say, I know you're not going to stop, but I need you to stop for me so we don't do this. So the first round and a half, I think Drikus is going to be really dangerous. It's going to be really scary. But the moment we hit past a one and a half rounds, I think Sean's going to absolutely fucking dog walk him. Thank you, Canada.